Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another edition of Mighty Empires. This is battle report number 14, and is one of our very first player versus player battle reports uh, for possession of a hex within our campaign. It is fought between my two friends, Odeth, with his esoteric order, the Thousand Sons, versus my other friend, Warlord Ace of House Lanel, the Silvery Host of Kalidor. So this is a fight between Chaos Legion of Sneak versus high elves and like I said before I'm super excited to report this one because it's the very first battle where we actually have player versus player combat one of the very few that we've had in our campaign so far right now we're in turn number four of our border princess campaign and our monster has been woken up a neutral kingdom has appeared in the middle of the map so that's what it's going to be fighting against for the rest of the campaign and right now my friends will be fighting over control of the hex to expand their kingdoms so we're gonna play some background music real quick if you want to see exactly what each of the armies is bringing Go ahead and pause and take a look at your leisure. So with that being said, let's get this battle report on a roll. So let's talk about the scenario rules real quick. Once again, this is just a simple battle. It is a fight to the death, standard deployment rules, standard battle rules as well. Both of these players are fighting possession over hex number three on our campaign map. Uh, there really isn't anything in it. It's just that these two armies uh, just kind of accidentally bumped into each other. So because of that, they're going to throw it down to see exactly who's the last one standing. As you can see, they're fighting on a four by four table. So with uh, scenario rules over with, we go directly to deployment. All right, so here's an overhead shot of the battlefield. As you can see, my friends are playing on a 4x4 table. My friend uh, Warlord Ace with his uh, house laid nailed the Silvery Host of Kalidor is apart on the far side of the table, while my other friend Odeth has deployed his Chaos Legions on the uh, near side of the table. And I'm um, not really sure what the battle plan on this one is because I just took the photos of this one as I really did for that. So with deployment over with, we go directly to the individual deployment areas and talk about where all their forces are located at. Starting with Odeth's Chaos Legion and his center deployment, on the left hand side he has the Chanters of Change, that's a unit of 24 uh, Chaos Marauders of Sneech, I believe those guys are carrying hand weapons as well as shields and they also got the Mark of Sneech. Also on the right hand side is a huge unit of 19 Chaos Warriors, they got full command, I believe they're packing halberds and shields in this one and also they're being led by their general Smallfar the Weakest which is a level 4 Chaos Sorcerer. He doesn't have any uh, marks because he's just a neutral wizard, uh, he's using the uh, lore of fire on this one. And on the far right hand side, uh, on the left hand side there he has his Gestalt of Power, that's his Gorbeast Chariot of Sneech, and on the right hand side is the Sign of Sylph, which is another uh, Chaos Chariot of Sneech as well. And uh, that pretty much makes up his right hand flank on this one. Starting on the left hand side from my buddy Warlord Ace is his unit of 5 uh, Illyrian Reavers, those are the Word Bearers. Those guys have vanguarded up 12 inches already so they're just a little bit away from the left hand flank of uh, my other buddy uh, Odeth's army for his uh, Chaos Marauders on the left hand flank. Making up Warlord Ace's center areas, on the left and right hand side in the back he's got his Griffin Guard as well as his Eagle Guard. On the left hand side in the front he's got his unit of 20 Swordmasters, those are the Sad Flutes. And on the right hand side is his Silver Sentinels, which is a unit of 24 Spearmen, led by his General Silent Fane, I believe his name is. That's the General who's a level 2 Lore of Life Wizard. And that pretty much makes up his center deployment. And finally at the top of the tower on the right hand side is the uh, Reign of Kalidor, that's a Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. And that makes up the right hand deployment for uh, my friend Warlord Ace. So with deployment over with, we go directly to the top of turn number one and my friends roll off for initiative to see who goes first. So that takes us to the top of turn number one. The High Elves managed to take the initiative on this one, so my friend Warlord Ace decides to go first. As you can see, this is an overhead shot of the table after the movement phase, and not real much movement has taken place really. Most of his infantry forces stay directly inside their deployment area. 
Um, there's no real need for them to move. At the same time, he's also moved up his Illyrian Reavers on the left-hand side, so that way the Word Bearers are starting down the flank of the entire main battle line of the Chaos Legion, uh, pretty much catching him to a crossfire. Uh, from my understanding, my buddy Warlord Ace has no need to move forward. He's playing High Elves, so there is no real need for him to advance. Uh, pretty much it looks like what he's planning on doing is just staying in the backfield, make his buddy Odeth come to him, and then shoot him apart as he comes across the table. And uh, that pretty much makes up the move phase for the High Elves. Here's a close-up of the five Illyrian Reavers from the Word Bearers taking aim at the uh, Chanters of Change there on the left-hand side. And uh, that's pretty much the move phase of this part. So with move phase over with, we go directly to the magic phase. Magic phase is largely uneventful for my friend Warlord Ace. He only has a level 2 wizard, and the two spells he has are Regrowth as well as Flesh the Stone. So the first thing he does, he casts his Flesh the Stone onto his Silver Sentinels, increasing those guys' toughness by 2, making them toughness 5 instead of toughness 3. And uh, pretty much makes the magic phase on this part. Shooting phase, on the other hand, however, was the most dramatic portion of this phase. Uh, my friend Orlord Ace takes his Griffin Guard, his Eagle Guard, as well as his Illyrian Reavers from the Word Bearers, as well as his Reigns of Kaldor, Eagle Claw, Bolt Thrower, and all those units converge and concentrate their fire onto this unit of Chanters of Change. Uh, managed to kill 11 of those guys right off the bat, nearly cutting this unit in half. It was an absolute miracle that these guys did not panic and run, uh, because in this army, my buddy friend uh, Odeth doesn't have any um, doesn't have any battle standard bearers within his army, so because of that, uh, he would have failed the leadership test. These guys would have to run because there's no rerolls. But luckily for him, though, he did manage to pass the leadership test, so because of that, uh, the chances of change just kind of stand their ground and keep on going. And since no one charged, there is no close combat, so that ends turn number one for the High Elves. So from there we go directly to the bottom of turn number 1 for the Chaos Legion and this photo is taken after the move phase. As you can see my friend Odeth starts advancing with his troops as quickly as he possibly can. He marches up the Chanters of Change and manages to pass their uh, leadership test to march past the uh, Olivian Reavers. They go on the left hand side of that standing stone. At the same time my buddy Odeth activates his Stormlords, moves them up 20 inches as well right between the uh, stand stone as standing stones in the center of the table as well as the forest. And by doing that he kind of protects his units from any uh, both of fire coming that way. At the same time, he also moves up the Gestalt of Power as well as the Sign of Self. Because they're chariots, they really can't march, so they just move up their maximum movement allowance on either side of that building there on the right-hand side. And that pretty much makes up Odeth's movement for this one. Here's a close-up of the Chanters of Change as well as the Stormlords taking cover behind terrain pieces, so that way they don't get shot to pieces by the um, Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. And here's a close-up of the Gestalt of Power as well as the Sign of Self uh, moving as quickly as they can across the battlefield to engage on the right-hand flank. So with the move phase over with, we go directly to the magic phase. And in the magic phase, the first thing my friend Odeth does decide to do is cast level 2 Fireball to cast it upon the Silver Sentinels. And in order to make that spell go off, as you can see here, he rolled double sixes, getting him a miscast. Klaatu! Mirada! <laughs> So the level 2 fireball spell does go off and it does manage to cause 6 wounds onto the uh, Swordmasters of Hoeth. So because of the, slow, the uh, Sad Flutes lose 6 more, uh, I'm sorry, not 6 members, they lose 7 members when they end up losing uh, from that unit as well. So right off the bat, that unit of Swordmasters has pretty much been taken down by a third. So that was pretty devastating. Meanwhile, my friend Odeth rolls off on the miscast table and rolls a 5. So because he has a small explosion that kind of goes off as his wizard can't really handle the magic that's taking place. The resulting explosion does kill four members of the Stormlords, at the same time puts a wound onto, uh, um, what you call it, onto Svarfall the Weakness, who's the leader of the uh, Warband as well, so that was kind of sad. I believe he also only lost one magic die from the entire magic pool as well, which is also pretty good, because uh, my friend Odith, I think he rolled an 11 uh, for the number of magic dice he actually gets to use for this turn. So the next spell that he casts is the Flaming Head, so he ignites a magical skull of fire and throws it across the battlefield and manages to bounce both through the Swordmasters of Hoth with the Sad Flutes as well as the Griffin Guard, inflicting two wounds on both units as well. Uh, because of the spell, if he inflict any wounds, uh, they actually cause a panic test, but luckily for my friend Willard Ace, both these guys survived their panic test without retreating, so that part was kind of nice as well. And because of the Kindle Flame Lore attribute, additional bonuses were put on the next casting phase, and he also put fl uh, Fulminating Flame Cage around the Olivia Reavers, so that way if those guys move, they take a strength four hits and uh, cause all kinds of problems for them. And that pretty much rounds up a very powerful magic phase from our buddy, uh, Odeth. Well, since he's playing Chaos Army, there is no shooting phase, and since no one charged, there is no combat phase, we go directly to the top of turn number two for the High Elves. 
All right, so that takes directly to the top of turn number two for the Hiles. This photo is taken directly after the move phase. As you can see in this photo, not much move has taken on at all for the Hiles. They say exactly where they're located at. Uh, like I said before, my friend Warlord Ace is taking on a stand and deliver type tactic where he's waiting for the Chaos Legion to come to him. At the same time, he really doesn't want to move his Illyrian Reavers because he doesn't want these guys to die from the fulminating flame cage. And uh, that pretty much makes up the move phase for the High Elves. So, during the magic phase, my friend Warlord Ace decides to use both of his spells. He first off casts Flesh to Stone off once again onto his Silver Sentinels, making those guys plus two toughness, making them toughness five instead of toughness three. Uh, because of the regrowth ability, he does heal back another wound for his uh, sad flutes because that another Sword Master comes out. He then also casts um, Regrowth, managed to bring back four more of those guys, and because of Lore Attribute, managed to bring back five um, of the uh, Sword Masters as well. So, a grand total of six Sword Masters uh, come back to life thanks to that Regrowth spell. And, uh, that pretty much makes the magic phase for the high elves. The shooting phase on the other hand was not very uh, very spectacular. The Griffin Guard takes aim with their longbows on the Chantress of Change, only managed to kill one member of the uh, Chaos Marauders, so that part was kind of sad for my friend Warlord Ace. And the Illyrian Reavers, they couldn't shoot at these guys because they were, didn't have the uh, line of sight on these guys because uh, the Chantress of Change had moved out of their vision arc. However, Warlord Ace took an aim with the Reigns of Caldera, which managed to use a single shot from the Bolt Thor onto the Gestalt of Power, and managed to cause three wounds onto that chariot. So that's kind of like the silver lining in the shooting phase. So with this uh, shooting phase over with, there is no combat because no one has charged, and it leads us directly to the bottom of turn number two for the Chaos Legion. So this is the bottom of turn number two for the Chaos Legions, and the first thing that my buddy Odeth decides to do is scream YOLO and roll 2d6s for his uh, units to charge. Uh, the first thing he does, he sends in the Gestalt of Power that makes an 11 inch charge added to his distance, to his regular moon allowance, had the Gestalt of Power charge directly into the Silver Sentinels. At the same time, the Sina itself also managed to do exactly the same thing. I think he rolled box cars in that unit as well, so because of that, he's able to go 20 inches and just flew across the table. So now both of those units are engaged with the, uh, the Silver Sentinels. At the same time, he also just marches up his uh, Chantress of Change left hand side as well as his Storm Lords on the right hand side. Puts up his Storm Lords right between the Standing Stones as well as the Woods to protect his flanks. And he also moves the Chantress of Change to protect themselves from the Bolt Thrower fire as well as reduce some of the incoming fire. Here's a close up for the two infantry units from the Esoteric Order of the Thousand Suns, making uh, the closing of the distance between their targets as well as themselves. And here's a close-up of the Gestalt of Power, as well as a sign of self-charging directly into the Silver Sentinels. So, with the move phase over with, we go directly to the magic phase. And during magic phase, most of the spells were dispelled, except for a level 2 fireball spell that uh, sparked all the weakest cast, and he threw it directly at the uh, both the crew on top of the tower. Manages to kill the entire thing, it's destroyed, and a hell blast of hellfire and brimstone. So, that part was kind of sad for my buddy Warlord Ace. So we skip shooting and go straight to combat, and as you can see in this photo, it was actually quite a bit of slaughter going on for the uh, High Elf units for the Silver Sentinels as well. Uh, first of all, the Gestalt of Power, as well as the Sign of Self, with their combined charges for the impact hits, I think managed to kill about half the unit just between the, the impact hits alone. Now granted, the High Elves were toughness 5, but these units are also strength 5 as well, so they're just rolling up 4-ups. So because they're able to butcher a lot of these spearmen as well, not to mention the crew of the Sign of Self managed to kill a couple of crew members as well. I mean, not crew members. Managed to kill a couple of spearmen as well. In the end, the spearmen were only able to cause two wounds onto the sign of self. They did kill the Gestalt of Power, but the combat resolution difference between the sign selfs of score of nine versus their of two was enough to help these guys uh, stand their ground. So because of that, the uh, Silver Sentinels do break. And not only do they break the side of Sylphan, also charges after them to run them down, manages to kill the entire unit as well as Silent Fey as well, and also charge directly indirect, uh, into the Eagle Guard on the right hand side. So, because of that, those archers are now engaged in close combat. So, with that, that takes directly to the top of turn number three. Not to be outdone by the Chaos Legions, my buddy Willard Ace decides to maneuver some of his forces. The very first thing he does, he actually charges in his uh, Sad Flutes, his unit of swordsmen, and they actually make the charge distance between themselves as well as the Stormlords, so because of the Stormlords are now engaged in close combat with uh, Swordmaster Zahoeth. Uh, to fill up the gap on the left hand side between the forest as well as the ruins in the middle of the deployment area, my buddy Willard Ace then sends in his Griffin Guard to kind of occupy that area and to kind of stand the ground at the same time. Meanwhile, he also decides to just say forget it, and he just decides to move his unit of Illyrian Reavers and bust through the Fulminating uh, Flame Cage. Luckily for him, he only did lose one Illyrian Reaver, and then he kind of swoops in from behind to get the uh, Chantress of Change stuck in the crossfire. And then everything else is pretty much engaged in close combat, so that pretty much makes up his move phase on this one. Here's a close-up of the Scion of Sylph as well as the Eagle Guard engaged in close combat in the backfield of the deployment area. 
And here's a close up of the um, sad flutes engaging the storm lords in close combat. And finally, here's a close up of the uh, Illyrian Reavers as well as the Griffin Guard. So the Wood Bearers and the Griffin Guard have the Chanters of Change stuck in a crossfire. So we skip the magic phase because unfortunately my friend Roller Ace lost his wizard. So we go directly to the shooting phase. As you can see, both the Eagle Guard, uh, Griffin Guard as well as the Illyrian Reavers open up onto that unit of uh, Chanters of Change. And they manage to kill all but four members of that unit as well. So unfortunately for my friend uh, Odeth, he doesn't take a panic check. And because these guys are dropped down beneath less than a quarter percent of what they originally had, uh, these guys need insane courage if they want to survive. Needless to say, they did not pass in the leadership test, so because of that, they do have to run through the Illyrian Reapers and take terrain to strain tests, and they lose two members of their unit as well as they keep on fleeing. And that pretty much makes it the shooting phase uh, for the High Elves. So with that being said, we go directly to the combat phase, and the very first thing that happens is that my friend Odeth issues a challenge with Smartfall the Weakest. Uh, because he has the Eyes of the God special ability, a special rule, he has to uh, set up a challenge. And since they're the only person that can accept the challenge in the unit of Swordmasters is the champion, uh, they both find out. Needless to say, actually, it's actually kind of interesting. The Swordmaster of Hoth did manage to put a wound onto Smartfall the Weakest, while meanwhile Smartfall the Weakest was able to kill the champion as well. Uh, when he rolled up on the Eye of the Gods table, he does get plus one to his armor save, so he becomes a little bit uh, more durable in close combat and that pretty much makes up turn number three for the high elves so that takes the bottom of turn number three for the chaos legion this photo is taken after the movement phase as you can see not much movement is really taking place because the two units that are really around for the army are pretty much engaged in close combat while the uh, chances of change those guys just kind of flee off the table so not much is pretty much going on for that part uh, for the uh, chaos legion Magic phase is kind of a wash for my friend Odeth because that we go straight to the combat phase. And as you can see in this photo, it got really brutal really quick uh, between the combat between the uh, Swordmasters of Hoeth as well as the Chaos Warriors. In the end, the Chaos Warriors did manage to kill six of members of the, of the Sad Flutes, so that part was kind of cool. But at the same time, though, the Sad Flutes were able to kill ten. I uh, sorry, not ten. They managed to kill nine uh, members of the Stormlords. And the reason why they got a combat score of ten is because of their banner as well, as well as the char uh, banner as well. So because of that there is a combat difference of four uh, for my friend Odeth. So he does have to take a break test. He takes that break test and unfortunately for Odeth, he fails that break test. As you see this photo, the sad fruits decide to run them down like the dogs that they are and chop down those chaos warriors to the last man, also killing my friend's uh, general as well. So because of that, sad fruits have just walked away uh, victoriously from that combat. Meanwhile, in the combat phase between the Scion of Sylph as well as the Eagle Guard, when he rolled for his impact hits, he did roll two, uh, well, one, getting him two impact hits total. But unfortunately, though, he was only able to kill one high elf from that, and then his crew members just flew, flubbed their attack rolls, weren't able to do anything. However, the high elves were able to put two more wounds onto the Scion of Sylph, making it only one wound away from actually dying. And uh, that pretty much makes up the uh, Chaos Legion's turn for turn number three. And it's also at this point that my friend Odeth realized that he cannot win the game, so because of that, he just concedes and uh, surrenders and the high elves end up being victorious for this battle port. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go directly to the post game because this battle port is now officially over. All right, folks, that takes directly to the post game. This is the post game for Mighty Empire's battle report number 14, and it ended up being a victory for Warlord Ace. So let's talk about their losses real quick. Warlord Ace, he lost Silent Fane, the Silver Sentinels, as well as the Reigns of Kalidor, while Odeth lost Smallfar the Weakest, the Storm Lords, the Chanters of Change, as well as the Gestalt of Power. In the end, Warlord Ace was able to secure Hex number 30 into his kingdom, raising his total territory to 9 Hexes. He currently controls a fortress, a forest, as well as a deep mine in his territories, and he's currently sitting at power level number 9. He controls 9 Hexes, he owns 1 point of production, and he can mass muster up 2,750 points worth of support. His total entitlements equal 1 Lord, 1 Hero, 2 Special, as well as 2 Rare Choices. Oh, Death on the other hand was unable to secure Hex number 3 because he lost it to Warlord Ace, but he was able to secure Hex number 5 into his kingdom, raising his total territory to 9 hexes as well. He currently controls a Wizard's Tower, a Mine, as well as a Forest, and he's currently at power level 10. He owns 1 point of production, he can muster 2,750 points of support, and his entitlements include 1 Lord Choice, 1 Hero Choice, 1 Level 2 Wizard from his Wizard's Tower, 3 Special Choices, as well as 3 Rare Choices. That's good to do for this one, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is always appreciated. Also, check us out on Facebook, Google+, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest and greatest news about our hobby. That's good to do for this one, you guys. We will catch you guys in the next one. You guys stay classy. Peace out.